Wow, that Kugimiya backstory hit me like a truck. Pun definitely intended. But, uh, it's realistic. Very realistic. Because the overall backstory to him and his overall thoughts and how he viewed himself and his problems, the conflict he faced, very realistic. It's stuff that many people tend to deal with on a daily basis. And I'm like, yo, this is... This is a really good episode because of that. So, I've already been told, though, before I go any further, though, I've been told that apparently this episode was very rushed. Like, the content of Kugimiya's backstory was very rushed, and some of it was kind of cut out or something, so I don't really know exactly what was cut out or what was rushed, but apparently some stuff was skipped and wasn't completely clarified, which is kind of upsetting, but it's what happens. What happens is what happens, I guess. There's nothing really we can do about it since what is done is, is done. But anyways, though, the overall backstory to me, I was able to grasp enough from it to understand kind of how Kugimiya is as a character and kind of why he acts like he does. So, he is someone that thinks he's mediocre. He's someone that believes he is definitely not that good. He has this complex about him. Let's let's go to the origin story, okay? All the way to the very beginning. Basically, he was this young boy that was kind of like the black sheep, or in this case, the black cat among his siblings. He was the youngest out of his siblings, and he was someone that obviously didn't seem to really have anything really going for him. His two older siblings, they were two individuals that were being able to get good grades, they were passing, they were going to be big people in society, obviously by the backstory we got. However, Kugimiya, he was a type of person at a young age, he had all this responsibility and weight put on him, but at the same time though, he just couldn't compare, and he wanted to go down a different path, in which when we see the cat pop up, and you see how the cat's like the solid black cat and all that, and you have the crooked tail, He's like, oh, cricket tail, and he starts following the cat. You can look at it like this. There's different ways to get the symbolism from that. Number one, when you think of a black cat, or at the very least superstition, when it comes to black cats, superstition usually is where a black cat is bad luck, very bad luck, and you can assume that the black cat could be bad luck for Kugimiya, that it took him down the wrong path, he went down the wrong direction, and it was completely wrong, and he'll never be able to turn around again, that's what you can look at as an unlucky turn of events, however, you can also look at it like this, it also might have symbolized that he was the black sheep amongst his entire family, and he was someone that could never compare to them, so he had to do something completely different, he wanted to do something different, which was dancing. Now, as he finally set up and started to do dancing, we could see he was actually legit having fun. He was enjoying himself, he was smiling, we could see that in his childhood, which is very similar to how, you know, Tatra is, Fujita, our main male character, and so we could see that they're very similar, and that's why he stated in this episode earlier on, he's like, when I look at your face, you know, Tatra or Fujita, it reminds me of myself, and it makes me absolutely sick. That right there just shows that he's upset with how his old self used to be, and he realized how naive he was and how much he needed to change, or how much he has changed since he was at that point in his life. So let's go back to what happened. So basically, after he started to dance, you had to worry his family, his mother and father start talking, I'm like, you know, he's been getting into dance and all that, and the father obviously is like, nah, he shouldn't be doing that, he he needs to be focusing on his grades and all that, he shouldn't be doing dancing, you know, they just didn't want him to do that at all, they wanted him to focus on something completely else, they wanted to make sure he did not pursue dancing. But regardless of that, though, he continued to dance. Now, we don't know exactly what happened between that time period, but we could probably guess there was probably a lot of conflict. For instance, you know, maybe his parents were very, very aggressive towards him and did not want him to do it, which makes a lot of sense the way the father acted, and so they probably did a lot of bad things. There was probably a very complicated relationship between him and his parents, and maybe it's never been fixed. Maybe this is the content that apparently was rushed over or skipped, but it's clear as day, though, that some Something happened, and he continued to be a dancer, even though his parents did not want him to do it. And the reason for this was thanks to his teacher, his senpai, someone he looked up to, someone that gave him the motive and reason to do this in the first place, and made him absolutely happy. This teacher was someone that used to, you know, oh, he liked Western type stuff. He was someone that liked the old school dancing. He was into that old fashioned dancing, and because of that, 
his overall style wasn't as amazing as others. Because nowadays, when it comes to dancing, people are very stylish and, you know, they're more of a zazz and all that and a little bit fresh and new. But he was doing an old dance which didn't really stand out and could probably not get anywhere in the first place, which led it to where he felt like he was mediocre and he couldn't accomplish anything with his life at all. And that led to his overall downward spiral of constantly losing, never able to get anywhere in his life, not able to accomplish anything, not being able to win, not being able to keep a partner. We could just see he had an overall breakdown. And eventually this warped his mindset to where he didn't want to be around anymore. He didn't want to continue living because he had enough. He, but at the same time, he admitted to himself he was a coward. He was someone that was scared. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it to himself. And so he wanted someone to come in and kill him. He didn't want anyone else to do it. He just, he, he wanted someone else to do it, but he didn't want to do it to himself. Correction. And so that lets us know that he had these thoughts. He was thinking of that. And as he was walking one day, he got hit by a truck. And he's like, God exists. That right there just shows how he felt about himself. He felt like he was scum. He was useless. He couldn't really do anything. But at the same time, though, you could see that when he finally woke up, he was very disappointed. He's like, the devil exists and all that because the devil kept him alive. He wanted to die, but he didn't. And even then, once he woke up, he had to wake up into seeing the hell once again that his own senpai, someone he looked up to, confronted him and said... I cannot make you a good dancer. I can't turn you into a professional dancer. I can't make you amazing. I just, I'm not talented enough. And it was a very sad moment. It just shows that this person that, you know, Kugimiya has been looking up to basically just broke down. It's like, I'm sorry. There's nothing I could do. I know I basically drove you to this point, And please forgive me for that. It was a sad and emotional scene. And when you see how that was done, it basically lets us know that Kugimiya, the only reason why he's still dancing to this day, is to prove that his teacher was not wrong. For instance, his teacher's way of teaching dancing and that fashion of dancing, he knows it's not wrong. And so that is what he does. He strives to prove that his way of dancing and what he has learned is not old. It's something that can still shine and be very impressive to this day. So Kugimiya's overall backstory. I'm a big fan of it. I like it. It's very... Simple, has a lot of weight to it, and I can see why many would actually like his character, especially after this episode. Now, I don't know exactly what they cut. I could have, you know, misinterpreted this episode wrongly because of the stuff they cut, but still, even then, though, I did enjoy this episode. So, anyways, moving on, though, let's talk about the stuff with... Tata, Fujita, and, you know, Chinatsu. So, Chinatsu, as we know, she's finally starting to open the door alongside of Fujita. She is no longer trying to forcibly open the door and all that, kick it down, and move forward. She's not acting like that. And Fujita is not just cracking the door and letting her open it the rest of the way. They're now equally going in, being aggressive, and opening up the door, which we see that they're finally achieving, like, their final form. They're finally getting into what will make them a perfect, you know, couple to where they can dance to their absolute limits, which is very exciting. Now, they're still obviously some work that needs to be done and that's kind of what the last half of this episode was trying to do showcasing that even though they are now starting to work together properly there is still a few little things that need to be worked on in this case Tatra is still developing he is still changing and this is something that's been built up for a while which I really like how that was added into this episode so Mako as we know the way Fuchida danced with her it was very different he, he was someone that acted more like a follow than a lead. He was completely different compared to how he is now acting with Shinatsu. He was someone that was very passive, someone that was very sweet, very nice, let, you know, Mako have what she wanted or what she wanted to do. He was always that person that was the background support, basically. While Mako was the spotlight, she was shining amongst everybody's, you know, eyes on the dance floor. And... We know now that Tatra, even though he's changed himself, he acts completely different with Chinatsu, he hasn't necessarily changed himself. The way he acts, it may be different, but he is still the same Tatra, and the reason why is, is because it's his character. He always changes himself for the person he dances with. He listens to their complaints, he listens to what they want, and then he makes sure he, makes sure he can give them what they want, and that's what he did. He gave Chinatsu what she wanted. She wanted a strong person that could take charge, grab the reins and be a good lead that's what she wanted and now 
Fujita is starting to open up and take spot the spotlight, and now being that strong lead that for Chinatsu, for she can follow him. So, very good stuff. I like how that was done. I like how that was built up, showcasing that, and that Chinatsu is now starting to, you know, be a very good follow, but they're both opening the door together. But on top of that as well, we also see that Chinatsu... She is also teaching Tatra. She is also teaching him and bettering him every time he dances with her. Because at the end of the day, she is an experienced lead. She is someone that has danced for a long time, a lot longer than he has. So obviously, she would have a lot more experience. So because of this, every time he dances with her, he's actually picking up on things. He's picking up on how to be a better lead. He's picking on uh, up on how he could actually, you know, dance with Chinatsu better. And so this is overall changing him and developing him at a very accelerated Right. So that is why that was happening like it was in this episode. But that's about it. Anyways, you all have a wonderful day or night, and I hope you all have a great day. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a like. Love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.